Hello everyone and welcome to a RPG developer botting tutorial on the layout tool editor. Um, this is going to be a very long video so I, I will have timestamps on in the video as well breaking it up to sections so you can pop to whatever part you need to use for your project. So uh, yeah let's go ahead and get started. Um, I made a couple of test examples here. Uh, so if we test play real quick. So this is an example of a speech bubble. I will show you how to edit that uh, in this video. This is a message uh, um, panel, which I will show you how to edit as well. Um, this is for conversations. Um, I will, like I said, show you how to edit as well. We'll actually move these down a little bit. I'm pretty sure you can edit that. I've tried and I've had issues with it before, but I think I can. we can edit it. But uh, like it says here, it even works with 3D models. You can actually have a 3D motion going on here or here. Um, I will show you the places for that. Uh, I won't do a 3D example on this one because I don't have, I don't want to load any in right now. Um, and it just looked weird. So, all right. On to here. This is a uh, emotion. Uh, effect and this is a ticker text uh, which can scroll actually so this will be like when you want to do your exposition of like the story at the beginning and such I'll show you how to edit this as well so we're gonna close that out all right and let's get down to the layout tool so I went ahead and made a couple examples here um, this is from the latest uh, Bakin, um Update, they released a couple of layouts. I just loaded the uh, SLA English one. Um, whenever you want to make your own, you cannot edit the ones that are uh, have a red text on them. You will have to copy, a little copy here, or you can right click and copy and paste to the little clipboard right here, and it'll uh, display something right down here. So this is just taking exactly what that was from that. Make sure your chat box is checked so that the game knows to load this one. Um, so title, you can have a background here if you want to. This right now is just showing that a, um, here we'll do a little example. I turn it off because I don't use the title menus at all. So apply. So when we start the game, um, it's only doing this because we haven't set an event to uh, to display the title. So we'll do that real quick, actually. We don't even need to turn the game definition on. So if you make a quick common event right here, we don't even need to name it. So uh, automatically start only once, and then you'll go to, I do believe it's screen effects, and display title screen, and that's it. So apply, save, and then test again, and it should have the transparent background. Yeah, see? So this is an example of like how to have a transparent background. Like say you had a scene that's going on, like someone walk, or like you're outside someone's house or something and there's stuff going on in the background. You can still interact and everything. Um, all right, back to the layout tool. So for system, uh, we had the loading screen. This is how you handle any type of loading screen that you want to have, whether it be custom or whatnot. Um, well, actually, here we'll, inc well, well, I've already copied and pasted it, so we're going to go ahead and increase it. And now with the latest update, oh, actually, we can't because it's a sprite. Let's see if I can do it here. Nope. All right. So when it comes to renders, it, anything you want to have resized, you are always going to want to make it a um, container for rendering um, because that lets you modify the horizontal and vertical size. And that is going to be um, very important. Uh, Sprite, this is for uh, Sprite sheet animations uh, that are not like slice animations. This is in the Sprite tool. Uh, the sprite set is the layout animation, and it's doing fade in, but we have the loading right here. 
which it is motion during display is clicking the loading, which is doing that. So if you wanted to make your own, you would kind of just copy what they have here in the sprite tool um, and go from there. So the startup logo, the logo is um, your own personal logo that uh, describes like your game and whatnot. Let's see, I have an example here made in Bokim Melon 2 Can Games Presents, and then it would show your title screen. You can edit just like any other kind. Um, like I said, just make sure you copy and paste so that way it goes. In game effects, display map menu. Um, I don't like the one that they picked, so I just left the default. So we're going to copy and paste that. So we'll make sure that's ticked. And when you press appearance playback, it'll show the map name, which is perfect. We're going to move that up here a little bit. And we're going to give it a image. We're going to do like a black image real quick. I won't even do that. Let's see if that works. It might be too big. Is it stretched? Okay, let's see. Yeah, no, that works. Okay, so yeah, see? We'll turn down the, put the white on there. So anytime you enter a map, it'll have like something like this. So you can have the map name, you could have more information. You would just add on to your text string down here. So let's say example text. Um, these are text string tags um, or formats. Uh, there's a whole list of them. We're going to go over most of them. I'm not going to be able to go through all of them because that would be way too long. Um, but these are like the main ones uh, for this type of information. So map, we have current map name. We'll go ahead and put the current time. So we'll do that slash time and hit OK. So you can have the map name and then the current uh, game time, in game time. It's not gonna be like your current actual time because you would have to set that up personally, but this is the current in game time the one, since you started the game. So if we go to map or test play, it'll start showing, see? And then it the map is still gonna show because of the, uh, What's it called? You'll have to um, disable this uh, for certain maps. Let's say your title screen and whatnot. You wouldn't want to have the map name and all that. All right, game over. Super simple as well. Um, just a quick, you know, whatever kind of animation you want. Uh, this is a sprite, so we can use like anything. Free out layout for events. Free layout for events. So I'm gonna go, this is going to be the one that is going to take up probably the majority of this video. So the best way to start a free layout is to have a container. You wanna have a container so you can put all your stuff in here and then once it's all done, you can just move it around willy nilly. So I'm gonna show you how to make a slider which is like an HP bar or like a value bar. Um, make it really big. All right, so it's gonna go in there. So a background image, you can have whatever you'd like. Um, we will do, I'm just using the ones from the actual um, game. That provides we'll do that why not i don't care just something simple uh background image is this why not and then change the color we're not going to change the color because it's all the same and then you would go make sure it's the same generally you don't always have to um but it does help so you can have it like that and we'll change it to like red or something. Cool. And then you have your frame thickness. Um, it has to be more than at least uh, one or for, especially when you're doing a, um, the parameters reflected are variables because for some reason it doesn't want to show. I don't know if that's a bug or whatnot. Uh, thumbnail image. Uh, I personally haven't used this yet. 
but you could have light say let's see uh no that's can't put that that has to be a slice uh let's do right, we won't do any of that but you can put a icon image there it'll pop up right here you can't really offset it um so display value as text uh, you can have that here. Personally, I wouldn't use it because I like having a value and then like the match value at the time, but you can still use it. So you do it's offset and the Y, it won't go behind it. So you, you can only put it up top. There's no layering for it. You can scale it. All right, control. So parameters reflected in the slider. This is going to be what the um, slider is reflecting. Generally, if you only have one party member, you would just do party HP, and that's just going to do your player. Let's go ahead and put that in there, too. Parent and child. Um, the upper value limit, this is the maximum value is that this bar can go. So generally, it's percentage, so you'd want to put it 100. And the lowest value would be zero, obviously. Or you can do the exact opposite where the lower value is 100 and the upper value is zero if you were, like, counting down and whatnot. Um, initial value, when it comes to putting parameters, like, uh, for these in here, it doesn't matter because it's going to fill it up all the way anyways. But this is for, like, when you are doing a, a variable or a value of an array variable. You would, oh, let's do this. You would click this. And you'll see that it's pretty much zero. So if you initial value is like 20. Well, generally it'll show up, but I don't actually have a variable here. Let me put in something. Uh, we'll do test variable. And this is where your variable would go. Um, okay, well, this is one word. Okay. Um, I'm not 100% sure about all this because I haven't really fiddled with it, um, but I'm assuming it has to do with um, when you have it in a, uh, when there's pages and whatnot, I think I'm not 100% sure. Um, you can have different values for it. So let's say about 50%, the color will change to say, orange or yellow and then at like 10 percent, it'll be like i don't know black almost all right um to make a menu you would have to do a container for entry selection which is right here so that's your menu container uh we'll keep it all inside the parent so here all right, default window. We are going to change it to uh, we'll use this one. Why not? So this is going to be our menu. Um, so you can have different motions for while it. Okay, that's rude. While it's playing, let's see. If that's the one. No, it's not speech bubble. It's a. Uh, There's one that's like all of them. I think it was under SGP pack. No, that's something else. Uh, there it is for menu animation. Okay, so we're gonna click this one. Uh, this is the sprite uh, mo Okay. So motion during display, we can have it go like this. So like you can do that. Um. You can use, where is it? There's a message one. Oh, that's need to be translated. I know there was one for, there it is. Okay, so we can do something like this. So you can have it bounce a little bit. Um, have it 
appear like that and then we'll put the disappearance so when you press play and then yeah so it fades in the control hide menu with when a uh, hide one menu is opened you can click this and what it'll do is once you have a selection place this will disappear hide when child text is empty is when there is no information to display in the text panel within the container. This container itself is hidden to display cast and status using special formats. So exactly that, I guess. I'm not 100%. <laughs> um, sub container settings, this is where your selections will be. Um, so we can have it line up vertically or horizontally. We'll do vertically for now. Number of elements per row or column. So this is when you want to have uh, um, multiple. So this is when, uh, say you have like one, two, three, four, five. Like if you wanted to have like a character select screen or something, you would use this setting. Uh, because I'll show you in a second. Uh, it'll start playing or putting them like one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to head and set it to like set uh, eight. Um, the selection frame image, we're just going, we'll just leave it as is. That's fine. That's where you'll change the, the selection um, image of like when you're hovered over it. This will change the color. This will use an additive composition. <coughs> uh, you can blink it while it's, on top of it, you can have a background image for it. There's a background color for it you can use. You can use additive composition as well. But we need to put in something here so we can actually have an example. So from the parent menu container, you're going to click parts and then elements for entry selection. You're going to want to parent it to that so it stays inside there. And then you're going to have to go to um, the panel and render streams rendering strings and it should already be automatically parented in there um, you can have a sprite that changes uh, motion as well while you're on it that is another option uh, we're going to here there you go if you don't see your uh, selection thing you just have to click appearance and playback and it'll properly um, update you can't resize it. It now I think it only resizes uh, through here. So sub panel width, you can change it right there. We'll make it one twenty, and the height we'll make it like forty. That's fine. Uh, the text we'll put it in the center so it's centered. I'll put it there. Okay. All right, so back to the sub container properties. Um, so this is actually a really cool feature that they just uh, implemented. So say you wanted to have like your left button open a whole nother menu, uh, you would have a, um, uh, where is it, sub container? You would make another one of these. See how it's going to the other side? So when I press this one, it should go. See, so like say for example, you wanted this one to be out here or whatnot. When you press over here for this example, here, where is it? When you press up, it'll go to this one instead. Um, so you can have like little options and whatnot, like uh, press left for description or whatnot. You can have it pop up there and all kinds of fun stuff. All right, so back to this. Hang on. All right, one more. All right, back to that. Sorry for the sound. Um, this needs to make sure it's parented inside there so it stays. All right, so back to menu sub container. Um, the action is what it does. So we have closed layout, which if you click it, it'll close this entire layout completely. Um, that's if you want to do like an exit uh, button and whatnot. Call common event. This will call a common event that will, uh, as soon as you hit the button, it will call the common event and it'll do exactly what you want it to do in that common event. 
um, close and call a common event. It's pretty much this close layout plus common event combined. Start from the beginning. That's when you start the game completely over. Continue is when you have a save slot that you can go to. Display exit game. It'll display your exit game um, menu. Uh, we'll go over that uh, as well for all these. Display item menu. Display items used. Display skill menus. Skills to be used. Skills used. Equipment menu. And etc. I'm not going to go over all of them because it's going to take forever. But as you see, you have many, many options. There's a new option too, which is the last couple of uh, things you can do. Another free layout. So if you had another layout here, come on, copy, paste, and where is it? Back here. And layout to be open would be the next one. You can actually even open the same one. It doesn't really matter. You can hide the parent container when layout is open. So if this, when you click it, this can be hidden or you can keep it there. Um, this is where the common events will go. You can have a selection frame image, um, which we have that's already set in the thing. Um, if you don't want a cursor, you would click this off. This is new. So before you had, uh, container management numbers which would uh which were all kinds of wonky i don't remember even what they did but we'll just leave that on uh go into your text you can even have um anything that's string related you can have all these options so you can have names uh values whatnot um so these the colors are these are mainly for the base battle system um, if you're using that. So like if you're, uh, say, uh, have no, um, uh, if you don't have the skill or whatnot, it'll be grayed out. Um, if you don't have enough or if it's not ready, it'll be pink, it'll be pink. And if it's ready, it'll be blue. I think I've never really messed with them that much and I don't really know what all they do. Um, these are brand new. You can have outline, shadow, bold, italic all at once, which is very nice. Auto line break is if you have a lot of text, it'll start breaking it for you. So, blah, blah, blah. so when I do that, oh, uh, if you want to go outside, you would unclip the clipping with parent container, but we're going to leave that on, but it stays, but you can, you saw that it broke. And when you unclick it, it unbraids. So where are you? All right, let's delete that. All right, so we're going to copy, paste. Ooh, nope, we're gonna keep it. So if you wanna keep it in the same container, here, we gotta delete that. Um, you have to copy the sub container click the menu container and then paste it there. So that way it'll keep in line. So you go back to the menu container, paste, paste, paste. Yeah, see, since we actually here, we'll do it one, two, three, four. So four, see, and it automatically fixes itself uh, as you're working with it. Uh, we'll do two rows, that's fine. It's very, oh, nope. Sorry. It's very important to uh, keep it in or paste it onto the parent so that way it keeps the information all here. Uh, going back to here, if you don't have a cursor, oh, you don't have to worry about it. I'm not going to use the cursor this time. But this is all the cursor information right here. You can have interpolation uh, for the movement and whatnot. Pages, uh, you can display that if you want. See how there's uh, the three little dots on the bottom. Um, hide one was a one page. You can do that. So if you only have one page, it'll hide. But if you have multiple, it'll show. I uh, have the offset and everything. Page position. Page position. I'm not sure about that one. I'm thinking it's these down here is where you can, is what it changes. All right. So back to panel. So I think I'm not 100% sure what the spin operation does. 
Um, but what I'm assuming it does. Where is it? Text. I'm thinking it's when you want to have like left or right and whatnot for something. I'll have to get back on that. Um, I'm not 100% sure what that all does. But uh, for rendering sprites, this is where you would put, um, if you were using the sprite tool, you would add your sprite set here. Save for that. And then here's all your motion selections. But we don't need that. All right, game in general. This is all the. Uh, these are all pre-made and rendered and everything. We'll go over all that because it's all gonna be over here, as well. Um, so we have party. You have all these options, which are too long to reserve, or is when you have people waiting in the party. Oh, excuse me. Save data, this is all your information for saving. Items, this is how you control your items. Skills, this is all the information for your skills. So we have name, image, description, consumptions, all that. Equipment has the icons, the uh, name, etc. I don't use all this because I more than likely will be using my own systems and whatnot. Um, picture book. Uh, see, the picture book is finicky. The picture picture book is finicky as all hell. Uh, <laughs> but if you're using it, here's all the information here. The item picture book for items, which is brand new. Um, stores, uh, your events, uh if you wanted the value of a variable to show or the value of an array variable to show, it would be here. Um, what is that? Oh, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. Um, but yeah, it's just simple stuff like battles, whatever, all that. All right, so that's uh, the big chunk of the layout tool. Uh, you, can, you really just kind of have to get in there and get your feet wet. Um, I'll go ahead and here, clean that up real quick. So if we go to apply, we'll call it after the title screen. So you go to screen effects and then display free layout for event display uh, name. I think that should work. Let's see. So we hit new game. And of course you'd want to um, well that's odd. Okay. Yeah, there's all kinds of fiddling you can do. Um, if you don't want them to move, you would just go to uh, the name, and then whenever it's opened, you would disable player operation, and then you can hide it with the cancel button. Um, you can also have a background music play while it's open. So if you had like a background or like a menu system that you want to have like a, a music going to it, you would use that. All right, menu. So we're going to probably, and yeah, we'll just use the default. All right, main menu items. So this is how you would set up your own menu system. Um, it doesn't have to look like this specifically. We're going to change it to horizontal. Yeah, that looks a little better. Um, so you can move it around and whatnot. Oop, 
Now I'm using text. No, I'm trying to grab the panel. There we go. So you do that. Come on, I want to grab the panel. Oh, forget it, just grab the panel. There. I'm gonna increase the size here. So now I just made my own custom uh, menu. Um, and like I said, the box is checked, so we don't have to worry about all that. Uh, each section is broken down, so if you were to copy paste, you would just replace it with your own type of um, information. Um, let's see. So item selection, uh, we'll go. Okay, I guess it is there. Oh, that's right. There's no chat bots for this one. I'll have to show you how to do that. So right now it's defaulted to this one, but uh, this is the default. So whenever you click items, this window will pop up so you can edit it here. So here's the item use window, the item details, and the simplified status. Um, item user, so this is when you are selecting who to use it on. Um, this is the menu right here. Skill activator selection. Uh, skill use is... Uh, like say you're healing and whatnot, this is all your learned skills for this hero and everything. Um, it's, what is, this is the default one. This is just pretty much this, but they're just making it fancier. This is how you would change it here. Skill selection, this is where you check or select your skills that want to be used. This is how you edit it and whatnot. Skill user, who you're going to use the skill on. So this is where your selection here. Equipment changer. This is when you want to change the uh, actor's um, equipment and whatnot. Equipment position selection. This position, what the heck? Oh, okay, I guess this is um, when you click it, it'll change over to the board weapon. Yeah, okay. So this is when you're like hitting it and it'll ask you which, what do you want to change. Equipment, this is what you have in your inventory. This is your statuses that you can change as well. Status, this is when you click the status option. Um, all this is here. Like I said, you can edit it to your own liking. Replace members. This is when you are rearranging your members around um, and taking reserves, reserve members, putting them in your party and whatnot. Cast picture book. This is if you use the cast picture book system. This will hold all your information for the cast and everything right here. Item picture book, which, oh. It has no options. Okay, that's that's cool. Um, maps. This is the map um, uh, menu, win, window and everything. Save file selection. This is how you would edit your save files and whatnot. Uh, overwrite confirmation. This is just when you would need to overwrite your save data and everything. You would change that all here. Configuration. Self-explanatory, you can have it. You can actually, I think, add your own options as well. Oh, okay. So spin controls are like toggles. So when you want, fa uh, or like options and everything. Okay, well, that made sense. All right, so exit game confirmation. This is when you want to quit the game. This is the message that'll pop up here, or you can delete it, period. It doesn't matter. It's whatever you want to do. All right, conversations, message. So um, it depends on what you're going to be using the most. This is where you would edit all the information. But the most important one, um, I see, no, these, the message doesn't matter. This is for when you don't want to have uh, a conversation with cast and everything and all the information, like uh, got item and whatnot, you would use this here. Conversation is where it starts getting um, uh, 
uh, you can start doing fun stuff. Okay, let's see if I can move it. Oh. Let's do this. We'll take this one. And I'll move it down here. Let's see if I can move it all the way down. It might not let me do this. Uh, I tried fiddling with this not that long ago, and it didn't fully work. Um, but we'll leave. Well, we have two conversations. All right, cool. We'll use this one. I didn't play with this yet. So we'll, well now we we'll use the first one. I like that. All right. So um, same thing as the message, top, center, bottom. If you were going to uh, modify certain things and you wanted to have uh, different images for here, uh, you would click your, where is it? Let's span this out a little bit more. All right. Anytime you see a little folder icon right there, that's generally going to be your background image or whatever um, image it's going to be using for the message. Um, text, you can change the size. You can even have all these options if you want. So we'll do that just for fun. Nameplates, uh, this is a input tag that has a special nameplate. And where is it? Yeah. So whenever I use the nameplate tag, it's going to pop up here and there'll be left, right, and all that. You would modify all this. Um, the main thing you would want to modify, um, I don't know if position really matters. I think it's just mainly to signify that it's over an event or a player or whatnot. So leave it as is where it is. But if you wanted to change the image and all that, yeah, you would change the window image there. Um, so let's go ahead and test that real quick to see if it actually works. Okay. Oops. Hang on. Let me fix that. Delete this layout. All right. So start the new game. And it'll disappear. So if we go over here, see the speech bubble. This is the new one that we selected. We didn't change anything, so it's going to be the same. Okay, so it does work. So you can uh, move the images around. So I'll fix that. In a minute. Oh, let's see the move. That's cool. Take your tats. We didn't do that yet. So here, let me go back to this real quick. Come on, let me click to the left. This one, so we'll move that uh, probably about right there. All right, there, yada, 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 yada. Okay, yes, yeah, so, I mean, it's not the best, but it's it works. But yeah, you can move that, which is really cool. Um, Back to all that. Ticker, uh, you have to copy and paste that to change it. Uh, background image, if you select to have an image, it'll go here. Uh, so you can resize that. The text and everything, this, where is it? You can modify to be bigger. Well, maybe. Is this it? Yeah, so the text in the middle is right here. So that's under the ticker message. And like I said, you can have all these extra options as well. Um, oh, excuse me. You can change the color, size, everything. General message, this is for... General message. Oh, well, like when you get an item and whatnot, uh, the ones that do like uh, the automatic ones that are built into Bakin and everything. Uh, you would change all the options here. Selection, this is when you were doing an input selection, whatever. Um, so I say you had a list of items, let's say, oh, do you want to go here? Yes or no. And you put it for the center and whatnot. You would edit that one right here, wherever you're putting the input selection area this is how you would edit it so if you only use one certain one you would just do the center 
um, input strings. I haven't really messed with this one too much yet, but this is for the name changing selections. Um, so depending on where you are putting the options for everyone, for the people to um, change their name is where you would do it. The input strings are down here. Um, so we have center, bottom, and then top. Uh, the output windows and everything, that is where the names are going and such. Stores, selection. So this is where you are asking or talking to them to say, oh, do you want to buy, sell, whatnot? You would change all that here. Buy is uh, self-explanatory. You would just do that or you would just um, use that. I would, like I said, I'll show you how to select it here. Um, all the information is there. Uh, quantity purchase. This is changes your quantity. You can even have it like combined with other things. Um, sell, same thing. Quantity sold is pretty much the exact same thing as quantity purchase. Discard item selection. Um, it's all right here and whatnot. Discard item confirmation. It's just confirmed if you want to discard it. You would change all that here. Um, the ends. Uh, information is all here as well. It looks like, you, yeah, you can change that here. You can select that. So this is like, say, if you want to stay here or like if you wanted to have your own custom message, like something down here, you can add that. Uh, battles. So battle messages. This is for, here, we'll put that one. When, uh, uh, oh, excuse me. I had a brain fart. When an enemy or whatever adds, so say, uh, enemy attacks this does this this does this this is this is that message right here uh you can change it like i said to whatever you want the tags are up here battle message make sure it stays that so that way the game knows which to switch over to battle statuses this is your in-game uh battle statuses um so like when you were in battle this is where your uh parameters are going to be shown you can edit it to what how it, oh excuse me is there a container for it? Yeah, okay. So you can move that here. Watch it here. Yeah, you can move it around to whatever, however you want. We have to have the default one as well. I like the, I like the newer one. Battle skill selection. Um, this is whenever you're selecting a skill in battle. This is how you would edit it here. Battle, ooh, battle. Battle item selection is uh, pretty self-explanatory as well. It's the same thing as skill. You're just picking your items that you can use uh, in battle. Battle commands. This is for like your attack, um, items, magic, skills, uh, runaway, etc. All that. You would edit all that here. So you would just command. Um, the naming of the commands doesn't really matter and doesn't really affect anything just make sure that it opens the proper uh action and whatnot i think that's weird that there's no action okay um i wouldn't mess with this one i would use the default because it actually has options and whatnot i do believe oh that's right that's correct okay so the command name is uh, a tag that uses the uh, default data database where I'll show you real quick is under equipments and here oh no battles so these are the command names right here so the first slot is here second slots here third slots here four slots so you would just use a command name from there and it would just go in order so that's the layout tool. I was wondering what that was, <laughs> why it has the name. Um, battle results. This is when you do like your level ups and whatnot. Uh, your um, ooh, must be tired or something. <laughs> your level ups, your items required, uh, all such sorts of things, your gold and everything. This is after a battle is cut, finished. All right, so apply. So I'm going to show you uh, before we finish up how to uh, select which layout you want to use. So change layout to be used. Say you wanted to have um, 
think it's mainly for the items. Hmm. So how does it? So, okay. So shop selections. This is going to be this. Uh, for example, if you wanted to have a different one besides the um the one the layout that we're using, you could use multiple layouts for like shops and everything. Um. Let's do an example. Message. Actually, we'll, we'll keep the same conversation. Let's see if that works. We have to make it start automatically once. Okay. So that'll change it, and you don't have to do anything for it. It'll set it and forget it. So, like, for example, we go over here. Message is the same, and then conversation. Yep, see, so we're not using the other layout. Um, there's that. And, oh, okay. So if you need to uh, change it on the fly, you would use that. And then if you need to change it back, you just have to make sure you set it back to the same one you needed. Um, but yeah, um, that's everything. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to message me in the Discord. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching. I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.